Hi everyone, Wes Shofiti here at Cloud Expo 2017. I'm here with Mark Eula from Nutanix to tell you a little bit more about the IBM and Nutanix partnership and to tell you a little bit more about what it is that Nutanix does and where it fits and where it plays. So with that, Mark, we'll turn it over to you, buddy. Come on. Thanks a lot, Wes. Hey guys, Mark Mueller with Nutanix. I'm an inside sales rep uh, supporting New York, New Jersey, uh, old name and commercial teams. Um, here at the uh, Cloud Expo, kind of doing a presentation on demystifying hyperconvergence and uh, where we play in the enterprise cloud. Um, so with that, I do have my slide deck here and be happy to answer a couple questions for you. Great. Uh, so in a nutshell, Nutanix were essentially uh, 2009 uh, founded. Uh, we provide hyperconverged infrastructure technologies, uh, supporting that up the stack further to more of an enterprise cloud. Uh, where we stand today, uh, 5,000 plus customers across 100 countries uh, with an NPS score, uh, third party validation of our support and, and where uh, we are recommended from a support standpoint in the 90 plus range. Um, we do like to speak to that very positively in that it's a negative 100 upwards to a positive 100 scale to where a lot of our competitors today hover in the 30 to 40 range. That's pretty so, impressive. So de thank you very much. Uh, definitely where we like to kind of cater that conversation in terms of support. Uh, what we speak about a lot today, uh, this week, is kind of really the public cloud. Uh, obviously, if it's not currently being consumed today, sure. it's definitely on the road now, right? right. So the frictionless consumption, uh, again, instant delivery of said applications, uh, invisible operations, really just with the swipe of a credit card infrastructure at your, at your leisure. Yeah, so that's an interesting point you bring up. You know, a lot of customers we speak with today are having challenges where the folks in the data center will have uh, different projects that get spun up by, you know, different folks in the line of business, yep. and they don't necessarily have good line of sight to all the different projects that might be underway. You know, last year I worked with a, uh, a small ISV that um, has some software that could go kind of analyze the customer software stack and in sharing that during customer meetings, the customer was not always aware of all the different things that were being tested or being run. Absolutely. You know, so I think it's kind of exciting that you have an offering that kind of streamlines you know, working with the data center to start these new projects, and it still has the look and feel and ease yep. of, uh, you know, public cloud. That's a great point, Wes. Um, again, uh, this is an interesting um, uh, environment in here that we have developers, we have infrastructure folks, we have really every person important to data center operations and IT as a whole mm -hmm. that Nutanix can kind of speak to in its own individual way, okay. right? So from Nutanix, how we differ from the public cloud is it's great to go public and kind of have that consumption model of uh, the environment available to you. But again, you're lacking some of the security and governance, kind of the, the manageability, really the control, yeah. right? So what we speak to in Nutanix is, is that control piece. Uh, it's really a question of do you want to own or do you want to rent? Yeah. Especially if your workload is, you know, in elastic as opposed to you know, critical. Right. right, right. So again, there is that myriad of that workload being a fit for Nutanix's goal. Sure. But again, if public cloud is on the roadmap, Think about Nutanix. Um, and a couple other access points to control, it's obviously tailored SLAs at every app, okay. really taking uh, invisible operations and focusing the cell more on the application level and the things are actually driving the business. Gotcha. Okay, infrastructure that just works. That makes sense. Uh, with that as well, um, again, not having an understanding of the infrastructure uh, that is being used in a public cloud offering, uh, what Nutanix can do from a uh, manageability standpoint is really uh, lack of vendor lock-in. So again, we don't mind if you happen to have a preference in terms of either hardware or a hypervisor. Mm -hmm. Again, actually, we encourage it. Uh, we do offer our own KVM-based hypervisor, known okay. as Acropolis. Okay. That's, of course, free of charge built right into the application. Okay, that's nice. But we plug and play into you know, VMware, ESXi, okay. Hyper-V, Zen yeah. Server. Uh, even at a hardware level, mm -hmm. um, we got to wrap this in hardware as, as a whole, but x86 servers, Super Micro, we do have partnerships, obviously, recently with IBM here, right. Dell, Lenovo, you name it. Mm -hmm. So really giving you choice both at the hypervisor and hardware level. Very good. Okay. In terms of Nutanix and how we scale, uh, very similar to that of a public cloud. Okay. Uh, it's kind of pay as you grow here at Nutanix. Okay. Uh, so again, there is no longer the um, inability to predict what your needs are today, three years, five years down the road. Mm -hmm. um, what we have wrapped in Nutanix is our backend management uh, feature known as Prism. Okay. And what that does in a nutshell is machine learning intelligence based of consumption of how your infrastructure is performing. Ah, okay. At the VM level, storage, server, mm -hmm. you name it level. Yeah. In Prism, which is HTML5 based, you can plug and play. We're giving you time back in your day. 
allowing you innovation on some management standards. So let me ask you this question. Um, from your perspective, what kind of um, uh, benefit would a customer see from, from doing this in terms of getting better utilization out of the hardware that they have? Absolutely, that's a great question. So with uh, Prism, this is a single pane of glass management. Uh, this is pulling together all of the different tiers of the traditional three tier all into one. I hate saying one-stop shop, but it truly is. Okay. Uh, through HTML5 base, you're going to have all support of, again, your, your services, your, your VMs, your storage, all in one place. We have predictive analytics as well as capacity planning okay. based off of machine learning intelligence. So in my role, uh, I can kind of, with our software, it's called Watchtower, it's kind of like your big brother, sure. Jay. Hey Wes, notice uh, <laughs> notice you're looking at about 90% capacity of your Nutanix environment. Uh, Not sure if you're familiar, but with our recent Nutanix update, you can maybe get that down to 45, 50% just based off of the DDU uh, compression oh, wow. based edition. Um, but with that, again, it's our ability for upsell as well to kind of expand that environment. Yep, and it makes the admin's job that much easier. That much easier. Again, um, we can we can go out for beers earlier on in the day, but because he knows he doesn't have to worry about his uh, infrastructure, he's not worried about there it. You it just does. Yep. That's it. Um, so again, with that, it's predictable scale, predictable growth. Okay. Um, what we find as well as an upsell opportunity for selling Nutanix IBM wow. is that first time purchases, again, we are so um, creative in terms of the customized workloads that we can support, sure. ranging from VDI to DR, disaster recovery, even test dev or remote branch office. Okay. Um, what we can do and what we actually see is first purchase kind of gets us in the door so you can kind of feel it, touch it. Um, I really observe it. Sure. Next purchase is typically 2.5 to 3x that uh, price point ASP of the original purchase. Oh, okay. And so it's, it's kind of landing and expand. Landing and expanding. Absolutely. Very good. <clears throat> Uh, from a architecture level, uh, really to sell Nutanix is uh, each node, think about a blade server, okay. um, minimum would be three nodes for redundancy and things of that nature, high availability. Sure. We're N plus one. Okay. Um, and on each node um, where your VMs will sit, we have what's known as a controller VM, which is think of a virtualized storage controller. Yeah. That's localized on each node with also the benefits of almost like a direct attached storage. Oh, that's nice. So we can have either a mixture of hot and cold storage or all flash on each node so you're no longer having to go across the wire. Mm -hmm. With your choice of the hypervisor, our native uh, AHB, which is again free baked in, mm -hmm. uh, as well as ESXi, Hyper-V, really whatever your choice may be. Along that line is uh, free of charge distributed storage fabric. Because we are 100% software defined, think of the iPhone of the data center. Okay. or the Tesla of the automobile industry. Mm -hmm. Your hardware, while remaining unchanged, can have rapid performance upgrades just by the simple click. I think it's two clicks of the mouse here at Nutanix. Mm -hmm. getting, getting that machine or doing intelligence upgraded in that same hardware. Now that's impressive. Um, in terms of tying everything up here, we do have our Acropolis, the hyperconvergence combining compute storage virtualization together. Sure. Then the other end uh, is our, of our software is the Prism. That is the one-stop shop management interface known as Prism. Okay. Uh, again, you're going to have best-in-class support with Nutanix supporting not only one portion but the entire stack. Uh, Nutanix is connected with a top of rack one or ten gig switch. Okay. Um, and again, with the future, you know, as networking speeds increase, we'll, we'll definitely adapt to that as well. Very good. Uh, wrapped in a nutshell, um, we do speak about hyperconvergence. That's kind of the coin in the industry sure. today. Um, Nutanix pioneered this. So again, as a uh, opportunity to sell to customer bases, wouldn't you rather go with who's proven and who's past stuffing compute storage and virtualization into a box and hoping it works? Mm -hmm. We've moved up the stack here to now we're talking about file services, block services, things at the container level, where again, bringing in these different IT counterparts yeah. makes sense mm -hmm. in Nutanix. Um, and lastly, from a support standpoint, we do have a Follow the Sun 24-7 uh, model. Okay. I sit in Durham, North Carolina, where East Coast Hub is based out of. Okay. Um, and you're always going to be speaking to a Tier 3 uh, representative who, nine times out of ten, who answers your phone call and the initial uh, ticket staging is going to be the person closing that out. That's not very good. Next to VMware, which is obviously a popular name in this virtualization world that we live in today, uh, next to VMware, we are the second largest vendor uh, of VCDF cert certified support engineers in the business as well. Wow. A little comforting from that standpoint. Absolutely. Uh, so in a nutshell, yeah, wrapping up with our NPS score. Uh, any questions or anything else? Just a couple things, you know, uh, from, a, from a, a, a standpoint of either a customer or, or as a seller, you know, where, where, where do you hunt? You know, what are the use cases that you know you 
had some success with today, yeah. you know, from your experience yeah. and, um, you know, where do you see the fit and, and what kind of um, cost savings, you know, numbers, you know, have you, have you seen thus far? Yeah, great question, Wes. Um, so a couple items I want to touch on. Um, Nutanix is really an opportunity to where if virtualization is being done, especially in the 15 to 20 VM stage, we're enterprise being brought to even as little as the SMB space, and I don't say that lightly, in that we are bringing web scale architecture, which the Googles, the Facebook, the Amazons have kind of created, and scaling that back to where we can utilize it every day, okay. enterprise-based accounts. Out average selling price, we could be, because we're 100% customized, based off of whether it be a test and development or a backup and recovery workload, sure. all the way up to maybe an enterprise workload, um, like soft exchange, SAP, things of that nature, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's really where we like to kind of be in the conversation. So let's get our foot in the door at one of those lower end test dev robos all the way up the chain. In terms of ROI and kind of TCO, yep. Nutanix is drastically, drastically uh, decreasing the operational expense. Sure. Okay. Um, we've noticed over a five-year period upwards of 510 percent savings, and that stands alone. 510 percent. Absolutely. Now that's phenomenal. That's validated from a third-party validation IDC. Yeah. Um, well known and respected. Sure. Absolutely. As well as the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Ah, uh, yeah. So Nutanix were very, very fortunate of this and happy. But both in 2015 and most recently in 16, uh, for integrated systems, we are in the upper right-hand quadrant, which is exactly where you want to be yep. in terms of visionary and leaders in that space as well. Sure. Um, so again, don't listen to me about us being great. We like to hear it from the third parties as well along the FPS. So. You bet. Uh, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, that, that's great. I mean, it, it basically says that uh, you know the cost of the solution far and away within 12 months has more than paid for itself, Absolutely. not to mention saving time, energy, and effort, and streamlining a yeah. lot of things that may be, you know, manual or, uh, you know, slightly disjointed today. We're no longer hitting the nail with a sledgehammer, right? <laughs> Just kind of thinking we know what our needs are going to be three years, five years on the road. This is with the marriage of machine learning intelligence with Prism, knowing what we need today, right. and not paying as you go, but really paying as you go. Sure. And that's, that's definitely the sweet spot we like to be in. It's exciting stuff. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. And uh, if you have any questions uh, in regards to the Nutanix IBM relationship, please feel free to reach out to me, Wes Shofity, and I can help direct you uh, to the right folks uh, at Nutanix to help uh, answer your questions and uh, help move the ball forward. So thank you so much and have a great day.